Welcome everyone to part 3 of the video series on AWS Glue Data Brew. This is Matthew Tan. I'm a senior solutions architect with um, AWS focusing on analytics services. This is part 3 of this video series. Here we will focus on enriching the data set by joining tables, union of tables, doing pivots, and aggregations using group by. In part 1, we focus on what Data Brew is how to connect to datasets, and to do data profiling. In part two, we examine how DataBrew helps you clean the dataset. In this part, we're going to see how to easily join tables, union two tables together, creating a pivot table, and to do group by aggregations without even writing a single line of code. The data set we'll be using today is a set of three tables of an online pet product retailer. The tables are sales data, product data, and a customer data which has been cleaned. These three data sets were loaded in part one of this series, and they were also cleaned in part two of these series. So now we will turn to the data brew itself and we will take a look at how we are going to do this. All right, and we're going to use the project that was created in part one of this series. And we're going to directly begin with joining the new data set um, in that project. Okay, now that the project is up and they have instantiated the instances to run in the background, we are going to start joining the sales data to the clean customer data. So we're going to go look for the icon that says join. So we're going to click on this. And we're going to select the clean customer data set. Now, once we are there, as you can see, it points to the data set, tells you what's in there, and it also shows you a preview of the data right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do next. We're going to select the join types. Now in this case here, we're using inner join. Table A is the sales data, and we're going to connect to the clean customer using customer ID. So we're going to select table A, customer ID, table B, customer ID. Now what comes out is a joining of all the columns, but you don't have to choose all of them. All we are actually choosing from table B in this case here. We don't certainly don't need a repeat of the customer ID. We are specifically in this case here only choosing the zip code because that is all we need from the customer table. Once that is done, I'm going to click finish. And you will notice you have the table from the sales table and we pulled in the zip information from the customer table. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to join yet another table. We're going to join the product table. So we're going to look for the product table. And in the same case, as you can see here, it can shows you a preview of the tables. I'm going to click next. The same thing. We're going to do an inner join. 
from the sales table, we're going to choose the product ID as the joining key. Table B, we're going to use the product key. In this case, it's slightly different, but it refers to the same type of information, just named slightly differently. Now, in this case here, all we are taking from the column for column B, same thing, we don't need the product key. For now, we don't need all these other information. The only information that we are pulling out from table B is product type. Let's click finish. There now. As you can see here, transaction date, customer ID, product ID, quantity, total sales with zip and product type. So we have joined three different tables together to get the table that we need. Now the next step that we'll be doing is a union of data sets. We have another table, let's just call it Gen Union has 10 rows. I'm going to be joining 10 rows. Normally you might, you might join a lot more, but in this case, just for demonstration purposes, we're just going to show 10 rows of data. And we're going to be adding this to the current data set. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go onto the Union tab right here, click on it, and we're going to select Gen Union. Right here. Now it will show you what is in here and it will show you some of the first 10 rows of the data right here. I'm going to click on next. And we're doing the union condition based on column names and we're going to overwrite the current project with the joined output so the total union output as you can see here number of rows 22 and gen union of 10 added together we've got 32 we click finish and there you can see this was the original and if you pull down, you can see that the additional data has been added right here. So this is how you do a union join of two data sets. Next, we are going to be showing you how we're going to do a group by aggregation. So one of the things we need to do is to clean up the data a little bit so that uh, we'll be able to do that. The first thing we're going to do, if you look at the zip type, it's a double. And we're going to change it to an integer. So click on that. Click integer. And we apply it. It has been changed to integer. So that has been changed. You can see it now is an integer. Now we're going to delete unrequired columns that will be not useful for aggregation. So we do not need the transaction date, for example. So we're going to remove the columns by going to columns. We're going to delete transaction date, customer ID, and quantity. Do it apply. Right. So the next thing we're going to do, just based on product ID, total sales, zip, and product type, we are going to do a group aggregation. We're trying to find out uh, what are the sales by region and by product type. So we're going to go to group. 
and what we're going to be doing is we're going to group by the product ID okay and we're also going to group by zip and the next thing we're going to group by is the product type you can probably see where I'm going with this right so now we're going to count all of these using a sum aggregation and we're going to we are going to count total sales I'm going to call it total sales sum and this is going to be a double So we're using total sales to sum, we're summing total sales, I'm going to call it total sales sum, and it's going to be a double. And what do you see here? You can see the product ID, the zip, the product type, and it gives you the total sales and sum. So there you have it, very easily giving you the kind of aggregation with just a simple click of buttons and you can get your aggregations just like that. All right, let's turn now to pivoting tables. Now in order to do a pivot and to be able to show you the data um, of how the pivot works, we're going to uh, filter the data just for toys. Otherwise, we're going to see we're going to see a lot of data. It's going to be hard to see how this pivoting works. So we're just going to do a product type filter. The product type. And we're just going to be selecting toys. Just toys. Alright, and we're going to increase the number of rows. We're going to do a sample size of 4,000. Let's load this sample. Now with that, we're going to do a pivot. Click on pivot. We're going to pivot on the product ID. We're going to sum on the total sales. Total sum sales. You can do a preview to take a look at it. Okay, as you can see, all toys, zip number, all uh, based on zip, the number of sales for this region for this particular product ID. So let's say click, click finish, you can see it properly here. There you have it. That's your pivot table on two different products by zip. And the product type is toys. So you, you, you can tell exactly where the sales are coming from based on zip. And that should be able to give you a sense of where uh, the sales are coming from. So what did we learn today? We learned how to join multiple data sets and unions of multiple data sets and also to do aggregations by grouping and to transform data into pivot. I hope this has been a useful video to show how DataBrew can help you do advanced transforms with DataBrew easily without writing code. The next part of the series will demonstrate how DataBrew can help you do feature engineering with DataBrew. Until then, thank you for watching the series on AWS Glue DataBrew. We hope to see you on part 4 of the video series on feature engineering with Databrew.